What is going on guys? It's Austin from Skylight Junction and today in this video I thought I'd take a crack at seeing if I can um, dig into this lo dig into this uh, locomotive see if I can at least service it. This locomotive I have for several years now. I think it's going towards six years since I had this thing. Excuse me, and it is still going like a top. This is my first ever Hornby model. It's in their budget range, and it still runs fantastic. This is Mallard. So you can see your nameplate there. But, I don't know. I feel like I never serviced this thing properly, even when I first got it. Although it still works, but uh, I just thought I'd give it a uh, fresh lubricant and all that sort of stuff. Because it's uh, long overdue. But before I do that, I will take it over to the track, and we will see how it performs. So we'll just get it onto the track and you all see how oh, a good performer she is. Even though she starts up smoothly. I just thought it's still worth giving her at least some maintenance. Because she does need it. That. Let's see if she can do a crawl. All right, I got the camera pretty close. It's buzzing. Still buzzing. There it goes. There. I'm not sure if you can tell if it's moving, but it's it is moving. It is pretty slow, but it is very jerky. I don't know if it's the motor or what, but yeah. Well, at least we can see that she can do a really good crawl. Now let's get her onto the workbench. All right, now we're back at the workbench, and let's see if I can get comfortable here. I think I should be fine. All right, so now this isn't a how-to, by the way. I will not be doing a how-to on this. This is just seeing what I can do. Not to mention, it's probably some giving me something to do rather than just uh, sitting around all all evening. What I'm going to do first is disconnect Loco and Tender. Uh, this wiring harness right here, you probably can't see it because it's too small, but it's not really the biggest um, thing that freaks me out. But I know I can understand it freaks a lot of people out, but um, if you're at least careful, uh, you should be alright. Because I know these things are literally as thin as hairs, but yeah, I can definitely understand why it freaks so many people out. There we go. Wires disconnected. But yeah, just as long as you're careful, you should be fine. Mm. Alright, now the tender is out of the way. So now we will get on to the locomotive now that its tender is detached. It's just a little something to keep your engines clean. It's probably the best way to do it. But yeah. Alright, now let's disassemble this thing, see how far we can go. And before I do that, there is something that I need to uh, remind you all on this side of the locomotive. Models that you will get of this in, I guess, today. This is a premium model that I have right here. Uh, you can see that there is this little dude right here. See that little. Uh, thing right there that's pointing at like half past two. I zoomed in a little closer so you can see it but that little piece right there. A lot of A4s especially the premium ones will have this thing but the railroad models that you will get today will not have it as you can see my model of Mallard doesn't have it but I think the earlier ones do. I think a uh, railroad Falcon and this Carter blue livery that this one is in might have that but the railroad versions um, 
and the British Railway is green like uh, this one is, for example, um, they will have it because they have no valances and it'll be completely visible. If you have an A4 that, that doesn't have the valances, uh, they will have this thing. But if you have an A4 with the valances in the railroad range, they will not have it. But the premium ones will have it, with the, even with the valances. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just something to get out of the way. So if you have that, you will have to buy uh, some of these hex nut screwdrivers, which is an absolute pain to find the right size. But just thought I'd point that out. All right, without further ado, let's get into this thing. Let's see how far I can dig into this locomotive. All right, with the front screw removed, it should come out. Yes, it should. All right, sweet. Oops. Oh my God, that would have been bad. Okay, um, let's be careful. Put that aside. And uh, I do apologize for all that. But anyways, here is the chassis. As you can see right here, I'm gonna have to clean some of this off. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I did this. All right, had a quick look at the chassis. Nothing broke when I dropped it, so that is really good. So now we are getting into this part, which I believe holds the, or covers the worm gear. Yes, it does. It's not too bad, but I think you can see it's kind of greasy. Yeah, you can kind of see how oily this thing is, which is good. I think we'll get that a clean just in case. All right, gotta clean as best I can. I didn't dip it in anything. I just took a paper towel. I'm just cleaning the insides. Just thought it'd be worth doing. And this is a motor mounting bracket I've this before. But now, get rid of this electrical tape. Let's see if I can find a way to take this motor apart. Or motor, motor off, sorry. Pretty sure there's a screw somewhere. Okay, I think I get it now. There's a screw right there. So maybe I can the other screws getting attached to the screwdriver. Let's see if I can undo that. I probably got to be careful because I think the uh, <clears throat> the base plate that holds the driving wheels in is uh, held in by some wires and I got the motor out. Huh, easy as that. And as we can see without the motor attached the uh, driving wheels are now free to turn which is a good sign. I will not be desoldering this motor um, but if I had to um, well, I can take the plug with me but I kind of don't want to do that. <laughs> but I just want to see how far I can go without actually desoldering the motor. And by the way um, for any of you people who are experts on eBay I've been trying to find these things for very cheap like two dollars. I could never ever find one of these ever. I've always wondered how do you all do this? Like, is there something that I have to search up? I mean, I'm not saying I need them. I just, I don't know why I would look them up. I don't even know why I brought it up anyway, but oh well. But yeah, let's see if we can clean one of the gears out. Right, I have one of the Q-tips soaked in alcohol and here's one of the gears. I'm not sure if it's ideal to do this, but it's ought to be. So that's one of the gears. Can I get this other one out? Sorry if I can't get it in shot and I do apologize if it's all blurry and whatnot. Now let's see if I remember correctly about the uh, base keeper plate held in by some wires. It should be because I think they're soldered directly onto that motor. Alright, with a gentle tug. Yeah, I can, I can feel that the wires are tugging. Alright, so. There we go. Now, yep, that was right. They're soldered. Just as I thought. All right, I think this is as far as I'm gonna get it. All right. At least I can get the wheels out though. And my God, the axles are filthy. That moment when you're happy you're finally able to access the bearings and the axles. Look at that. That is just filthy, man. Yeah, I'm really glad I made this decision. This thing is definitely long overdue for a service. All right, let me clean this up and I'll get back to you. I 
just got this out of one of the uh, front axle. Yeah, I've been running this thing on a floor. I used to run this thing on the floor, if you've been following my channel for a while. Yeah, really glad I did this. Sorry, I keep forgetting. I need to let you see everything. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this, man. Dude, that is absolutely Okay, getting rid of Q-tip. Give me a second, guys. I might have to get some thinner Q-tips or something because some of these don't fit in this slot right here where the bearings and the axle sit. But I will get them clean. Don't worry. Oh, right. I do apologize if I keep blocking the view. Yeah, I should probably find thinner Q-tips for <laughs> accessing the slot. Oh, no. Well, I'll be, how did I not think of this sooner? <laughs> I'm a moron, man. Uh, oh, well. Hopefully that should be good enough for now. I will realign the bearings. Actually, while I'm at it, I think I might clean the wheels. Well, actually, no, 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 I won't. It's probably difficult to clean the wheels like this. Give me a second. And I'm back, you know, it took a couple seconds. The valve gear was out of place on here and one of the pistons thingamajiggies were out of place in the pistons. And now the wheels are basically free to turn. So I'm gonna be putting, well, actually I need to clean the base plate first before I put everything back in. I also need to clean the pickups too, to remind me. Not much dirt coming off of them, if you can uh, see that, and the air conditioning comes on. I think that'll about do it. So now it's just aligning pickups carefully. It's probably a dangerous thing to do, but let's see if I can gently tug. Alright, the wheels are free to turn. Sweet. I'll lubricate them later. Looks like none of these wires on the terminal wire snapped, so that's really good. I like to see that. First, before I put the thing back in, I will need to put the gears back in. Well, all right, I think it's now uh, assembling the locomotive back together. We can call it. <clears throat> I'll screw the motor back in and I will get back to you guys. Alright, and that's the locomotive back together, and I better do this quick because the battery is running low. Alright, now that the mallard has been fully serviced, I haven't cleaned the wheels though, but uh, we'll see if she still works anyway. And by the way, I did try to open up the base keeper plate for the tender, but unfortunately the screw that is pretty much under the uh, water tank, about right here, is so hard to get apart. I don't know why, but... I decided not to mess with it in case I stripped the screw. But anyways, let's see how well this engine runs. Oh uh, yeah, runs just as good. Still got the same performance, but I think it was still worth the service anyway. Now let's watch her scream around the layout. And there she goes flying. Doing really good. And just to do a small little celebration before my camera dies, I'm gonna have a pull a rake of four British Pullman coaches. 
So I'm gonna try and get some angles, and in case my camera does die, <laughs> I will see you guys in the next video. All right, take care, everybody.